Hey, what's up guys, this is Larry B. I recently decided to delid my 7820X. I've owned the CPU since launch and temps have always been a problem. When doing daily tasks such as web browsing, watching YouTube and social media, I'd hear the fans ramp up. When doing things like encoding video, the CPU would hit upwards of 100C, sometimes even over. This has always annoyed me and high temps in general aren't good for the longevity of your system and performance. So, I finally decided to do something about the temps and delid the CPU. Before we get started with this video, I want to warn people looking into delid in their CPU. Make sure you have a CPU that uses thermal paste under the IHS. Some CPUs IHS are soldered and you'll actually damage the CPU trying to delid them through conventional means. Soldered IHS are also really good at transferring heat already, so there really isn't much of a point in trying to delid them. Now that that's out of the way, Let's take a look at the tools and materials we'll be using. Some of these you'll have to buy online and some you may already have floating around your house. I'll provide links to all products mentioned. The first thing you'll want is a delidding kit. There are other methods of delidding, though to be safe, I'd suggest buying a delidding kit. The kit you'll want varies based on the CPU you you're delidding. For me, I'm delitting an X299 chip, so I went with a Rocket 99 delitting kit designed for X299 CPUs. The kit costs $40 on Rocket's website and includes free shipping. This kit is not designed for CPUs such as Coffee Lake or Cabby Lake. If you're not sure about which kit to get, ask on a forum such as OCN. The next thing you'll want is some kind of thermal paste to replace the stock thermal paste under the IHS. For me, I went with Cool Laboratory Liquid Pro. This paste is liquid metal and costs around $12 on Amazon. As a warning, be aware that liquid metal is conductive and can short out connections on your CPU PCB if you're careless. Be careful when using liquid metal and take the proper precautions. That brings us to fingernail polish. To protect your CPU from liquid metal, you're going to want something to coat sensitive spots on the CPU PCB from possible liquid metal spillover. For that, I'm using fingernail polish. There are other products available for this, though I went with fingernail polish because it looked easy to apply and my old lady already had some on hand. For the fingernail polish, you're looking for specific ingredients called nitrocellulose. Uh, I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link to some suggested fingernail polishes, though I personally suggest that you just go to something like Walmart and pick one of these bottles up for like three or four bucks. To spread the liquid metal, we're going to want some Q-tips. The liquid metal I use came with some, though I suggest having spare on hand. I went through a lot of Q-tips spreading liquid metal on my CPU and heat spreader. You'll also need some 91% rubbing alcohol and paper towels to clean up any thermal paste and liquid metal. Lastly, you'll want some way to reseal the IHS to the CPU. For this, I'm using Loctite Gel Control Super Glue. This is the glue suggested to me by the folks over at Rocket. There are other methods and products though, like fingernail polish, super glue seem the easiest and cleanest way to go. Before getting started, I suggest that you open up everything you'll use for the delidding process. I opened up everything as I went and was sent scrambling a few times, uh, looking for something to poke a hole in the super glue and a knife to cut something open. And it just generally screwed with the flow of things. So definitely get everything open before you start the process. Don't do like I did. Okay, so you've got everything opened and ready. It's time to put the CPU in your delitting kit. For my kit, there was a triangle showing which way the CPU goes. Simply line the triangle on your CPU up with the triangle on the kit and drop the CPU in place. It should be a snug, clean fit. After the CPU is in place, you need to put the top on. There are three screw holes on the top of my kit that align with three screw holes on the bottom of my kit. Get the top in place and then use the supplied screws to secure the kit in place. I suggest not over tightening and stopping once you're feeling significant resistance. Now that the CPU is in your kit and the top and bottom are attached, it's time to pop the IHS from the PCB. To do this, you start by hand tightening the bolt sticking out of the side of the kit and then move into this plied island wrench. You want to do this until you hear the IHS make a pop sound. Ooh.
This sound is the sealant used on the IHS break-in. The sound is very unsettling, but normal. Once you've broken the IHS sealant, back off the bolt and remove the screws from the delitting kit. Open up the kit and remove the CPU's IHS. The IHS should be fairly easy to peel off the CPU. Once the IHS is removed, I suggest putting the CPU back in the delitting kit and looking over your CPU and IHS making mental notes of anything that looks like it would be easy to accidentally break. From here, clean off the old crusty thermal paste. For the next part, you'll need to remove the old sealant from the IHS and PCB. The Rocket 99 kit comes with a wooden tool for this. For my CPU, this was a painstaking process that involved a lot of back and forth. I used the flat end of the tool to peel up some of the sealant and then I'd use the tool almost like an eraser. I'd then use the pointed side of the tool to detail. I just suggest starting with the IHS to familiarize yourself with the process and then moving to the CPU. I also just suggest keeping your area clean during the process. Be very careful around the resistors and capacitors on your CPU. You don't want to break these off. Expect to spend at least 30 minutes, maybe even an hour, cleaning the CPU. After you've cleaned off all the old sealant, it's time to apply the fingernail polish to any areas you want to protect on the PCB. This is a quick and simple process. The main thing you want to avoid is getting fingernail polish on the CPU core. Once applied, allow the fingernail polish to dry until it no longer feels tacky. With the PCB protected, it's time to apply the liquid metal to the CPU core and IHS. For the liquid metal, I suggest starting off by putting a small amount on another surface and then transferring it to the CPU core. Be very careful with where you're pointing the liquid metal when releasing it. As you can see here, I shot liquid metal across my room in the direction of my X34 gaming monitor. As for the amount of liquid metal to use, you're looking at a very small amount much less than you're used to applying to heat sinks. You'll find that a little bit of liquid metal goes a long way. If you do to apply too much liquid metal, then you can suck up the access with the liquid metal tube, though I did find this kind of cumbersome. To spread the liquid metal around, you want to use the Q-tip supply to slowly work the liquid metal around the CPU. You want to avoid pulling of liquid metal and cover the whole CPU core. Clean up any mistakes you make as you go with a towel or q-tip. After you have applied liquid metal to the CPU, it's time to apply it to the IHS. Same idea here, a little liquid metal goes a long way. After spreading the liquid metal in your CPU core and IHS, give everything a look over and clean up any, X, any liquid metal you might have got somewhere where you don't want it. Alright guys. Now all that is left is to seal the IHS back onto the CPU PCB. The Rocket 99 Delete Kit comes with a top that allows you to perfectly realign the IHS on the PCB. Put this top on the kit if you haven't already and then apply a small amount of glue to all four corners of the IHS. If you look at the IHS, there is a small dot in the corner of the IHS that aligns with the triangle on the PCB. Install the IHS and use the included tie down and thumb screws to secure the IHS in place while the glue dries. I suggest leaving the glue to dry for at least 15 minutes. After the glue dries, remove the CPU from the delitting kit. Clean off any dirt or sealant on the CPU and you're ready to install the CPU back into your system. Okay, now for my results. For the test, I'm running my CPU at 4.4 GHz at 1.2 volts. I ran real bench stress test for 15 minutes. As for the CPU cooler, I'm using an H115i. As you can see with the stock thermal paste, I saw a max temperature of 97 Celsius. During the test, I observed core temps floating between 89 and 91 C. After the delitting, I saw a max core temp of 85 Celsius. During the test, I observed core temps floating between 78 and 81 C. So, from delitting, I removed 12 C off the max temperature and at least 10 C off my average temperature. So, now that I have the delitting out of the way, am I happy with the results? Yes. While 10 to 12 C doesn't sound like a large difference, it's obvious in my usage that the system is running cooler. 
The system is not struggling to keep lower temps, and during normal usage, I do not hear my H115i fans kick in. Before delidding, even watching YouTube or surfing the net could kick my fan curve in. Now, my system stays quiet during normal use. As for more stressful usage, I did not take measurements, though I have observed the system hitting right over 100 Celsius when encoding video before delidding, meaning the system was throttling. Dropping 10 Celsius off that temp should mean the system can now render or encode without throttling. With gaming, I never found temps to be an issue, though I did note while playing Metal Gear Solid 5 last night, my max CPU temp was 52 Celsius instead of the 62 Celsius I noticed the night before. Sadly, I didn't take proper measurements of this. Alright, so having gone through the delitting process, I can say for me it was worth the effort. My temps are lower and the system is more enjoyable to be around. What do you guys think? Was shaving 10 to 12 C off my temps worth the cost and effort of delaying the CPU? Would you delete your CPU for those kind of temp gains? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like it. Other than that, that's all I have, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.